A new power is rising. I've foreseen it. The Jedi are going to lose this war, and the Republic will be ripped apart from the inside. In its place is going to rise a new order, and I will rule as part of it. A. D. N. It's headphones nailed! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with an interim review in the Star Wars universe in that, um, so much like a lot of Star Wars fans, I've been watching The Bad Batch and I've been thinking about um, why the storyline as far as the clones questioning the motives of the Republic, their superiors, the other clones and things like that sounded so familiar and it finally hit me earlier this week that the story arc reminded me of the story arc in Star Wars The Clone Wars when it comes to the Jedi Master Pong Krell. So this is a story arc that happened in Season 4 of The Clone Wars where um, the 501st Legion under Anakin Skywalker is helping Obi-Wan Kenobi or with Obi-Wan Kenobi to to, um, take the planet of Umbara. Um, Chancellor Palpatine then calls Anakin back to Coruscant, so uh, Pong Krell takes over the 501st to help take the planet. His motives and his ability and what he does as a Jedi are legendary in that his missions are always a success, but he also has a high clone trooper death count. So this is kind of uh, when we see that things are going to go a little sideways, we're not sure why or how, but it also leads us to the clone troopers questioning whether they're programmed to do something or they're doing it because they are living, breathing, unique beings and individuals. So basically, are they a clone trooper number or the name um, that they've come to personify? So. For example, Rex and Heavy and Tup and Fives and all of the various clones. So the Umbaran story arc, or I guess the battle for Umbara, shows us or gave us two important threads in the um, clone trooper um, history in that, first of all, we see that the um, um, clone troopers can turn on and defeat their clone general. So Granted, the casualties are going to be higher um, if the um, store if the Jedi Masters know or Jedi know that the they're being attacked by the clone troopers. But it does show that the Jedi are not invulnerable. But it also shows that even though that the clones are programmed from birth to be soldiers for the Republic, even though they have the inhibitor chips, they do have their own unique individuals and identities. So. I kind of want to say that that's why um, Emperor Palpatine had those chips installed with the various order, orders implanted in it. So in the case that the clone troopers didn't function as, prof as um, indicated or they started to show their identity, at some point he's going to need them to turn on the Jedi in a mass form. And that's kind of what we see in the form of Order 66. Um, and the various other orders are essentially various contingencies, contingencies, so like if the Jedi need to figure out who Palpatine is and take him out, and various other things like that are all programmed on that inhibitor chip. So when you're watching The Bad Batch, um, and if you've already started to watch it, I would definitely recommend going back to watch the story arc for The Battle of Umbara. It was in Season 4, I want to say Episodes um, 7 through 10 and something along those lines because it was a, f um, a four episode story arc um, it, where we see the um, gen or uh, we see Pong Krell take, uh, take over the 501st in the first episode and we see that um, they're used to the clones are used to Anakin Skywalker's means of leadership he's out on the front lines with them, whereas Pong Krell stays more. He takes on a more uh, command leadership role away from the front lines. Um, and the story arc generally progresses to show that rift between the clones and um, the Jedi. And in this case, it's one Jedi, but it shows, starts to show us that slight inkling that 
not only are the Jedi not invul invulnerable, but they're not all built the same. So even though we see um, Jedi like Anakin and Obi-Wan, who and even Ma uh, Mace Windu and Yoda, who treat the lives of each of the um, um, clones as human and valued parts of their troops, there are other Jedi like Pong Krell who don't value the lives of clone troopers and treats them as inferior and as um, basically property of the Republic that are expendable. So this was a very good story arc, one of those ones that I didn't, I, I liked at the time and I liked it now as well. Um, it was very beautifully shot as far as, far as all the Embaran scenes, the, um, the plant life, the Embarans themselves, their um, um, firepower and um, ships and all of that. And then I liked the little callback in the middle of it where um, Anakin had told, I believe it was Rex or maybe Fives at some point about how he blew up the Trade Federation ship all the way back in episode one. And they used a similar tactic here to do the same thing with the Trade Federation ship in order to um, help the Republic win the day. So, like I said, overall a good four arc, um, four arcs, four episode story arc, I mean to say. Um, so definitely worth a watch, um, and they're all on streaming on Disney Plus. So definitely check them out there to give them a watch. And something, something to think about when you're watching the Bad Batch because. Um, since the Bad Batch doesn't have their inhibitor chip um, um, in their brains, they're not plugged in or whatever, and they don't spend as much time with the Jedi, they still see, I mean, not to say that the troops generally find the, the Jedi are evil or good, but because the Bad Batch doesn't have the inhibitor chip um, plugged in, and um, the Bad Batch has really only worked with the Jedi on in a positive way, um, capacity that's kind of what they have in their minds that the Jedi are good and so they wouldn't believe or it's hard for them to believe that they would try to overtake overtake the Republic overthrow the Chancellor and all of that stuff so that's all there is for this particular review so um, I look forward to another episode of the Bad Batch this week to see what how they progress that story and what kind of tra what continued transitions they show us as far as a transition from the Republic to the Empire, what sort of stuff um, Tarkin's going to throw at them, uh, what kind of things they, the Bad Batch gets into as far as potentially other bounty hunters, so maybe someone like um, some of the bounty hunters from uh, Empire Strikes Back. So that's all there is for this particular review. Um, and also if you follow me on YouTube, I'm still continuing my gameplay or my ga new gameplay playthrough of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic to the Sith Lords. So in this particular case, I'm gonna I'm trying to change up the planet order. Um, I'm definitely gonna go dark side and I'm also gonna try and get Revan's robes. So the past couple of times, I don't think I was going for Revan's robes and I might have gotten them at some point in the past, but um, because I got Revan's robes in Knights of the Old Republic 1, I thought I would get them here and definitely continue to build up um, the battle meditation power that we found out about that Basila had in the first game that we can now get as a player in the second game. So that's on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash n one The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all that good stuff. The Twitter is um, at PatelN01 for, past, for um, if you have your own feedback, comments, thoughts, updates, and things like that, um, and all that good stuff. But thanks for tuning in to this particular episode, and until next time.